When I was junior high age and my mom told me to do my math, I would cry, I would throw temper tantrums because I hated it because I didn't understand what I was doing. So she bought Mortensen math for me and I learned how to do it on that. And when I went back to high school, I aced my benchmark test. I understood all the algebra they were teaching me. And so they thought I was a math genius, which I knew was wrong. It was just from learning through Mortensen math, I knew the concepts of the math I was learning. To get A pluses in math was incredible. Um, I was very, one of the very few who was getting it and it felt just wonderful to be one who understood and knew what they were doing. Sinue Hardegree began learning how to do algebraic factoring and polynomic functions when he was three years old. He's just one of thousands of youngsters across the nation being taught what's called Mortensen math. And that's what these teachers are here to learn. They've come from Miami, Princeton, Alaska, Texas, all to study the method which teaches basic concepts of math in a different way, using brightly colored plastic blocks of different sizes and numerical values. We are decoding the symbols into a mathematical question. All you do with math is count. So every one of those questions has to be verbalized in terms of counting. And Mortensen says anyone who can count to nine can learn math from the simplest addition to calculus. Since Sinue is more or less the demonstration model for this seminar, we gave him a problem Mortensen created. Plus 5x squared plus 6x plus 2 divided by 2x plus 1. You can do that easily? Yeah. Let me see. So we left him to it. He certainly didn't need my help. And even without his demonstration, these teachers seem sold on it. Janet Harris spent her own money on a kit. So that whether my school buys it or doesn't, at least I will have it so that I can teach. And I think it will really help with getting the kids to really understand what's going on, not just memorize rules. Meanwhile, back at the blackboard, the Sinue had his answer. X squared plus 2X plus 2. That's right. Is that right? I know. Children can be very successful even if they're not the greatest math students in the world. But they're not going to be successful if they don't have a high self-image of themselves. So my mission is uh, to change the way kids are taught so that all children leave the system with their dignity intact. I came back the next day. Richard was no longer sitting in the back row in the corner. Do you know where he was sitting? Right on the front row. Do you know why? Because a day before he was a smart aleck, and now he was what? Smart. Which felt better? Smart. As I left that day, Richard came up to me. And with tears in his eyes, he said, thanks for coming. By being there two days, I had told him that he was what? Smart. smart. How important is it that kids always know they're smart? I've often wondered, what's become of Richard? Was anyone there the next day and the next day and the next day to let him know that he was smart? Kids who achieve in mathematics think they're smart. They think they're smart because the kids around them think they're smart. With this self-confidence and this self-image, they become achievers in all areas. Let me give you an example of how achievement in mathematics can make a difference. Up in Alaska, a teacher told me this story. She told me about a little girl who was a total academic failure. She mentioned that this little girl came to school looking so sad, always in a wrinkled dress, her hair never combed. She got started on the Mortensen math and became an achiever. She then related the story to me how this child's grades in every area improved. And she started coming to school in nicely pressed dresses and combed hair. That's the kind of difference that 
achievement in mathematics can make. It is time that we evaluate how our kids are being taught and what the total effect is on their mind, spirit. It's time to make our children our number one priority. My youngest daughter, Renee, is in the sixth grade, and she was struggling with fractions. When I took her through the Mortensen math method of teaching fractions, she was able to pass the fractions part of the test, and with two weeks, they had, she had progressed through from being in medium math into the high math class. What I got excited about was when I could show my children how to do things hands-on and how to learn things that I had to learn in an abstract way, they can learn it hands-on. And after all, hands-on is the only way anybody ever learns anything. I could see the light come on when the kids could get something in their hands and they could actually see the math taking place and they could feel it and they could understand it. Well, I'm impressed with Mortensen math because I can see that they can take the hands-on approach much further than I ever thought they could. I, I always knew that we could show people two plus two is four, but I didn't realize we could do algebra and even calculus and it seems like what Jerry Mortensen's doing now is going further and further and I still can't imagine how he's going that far. What this is is a uniform methodology for the visualization of mathematics. A uniform methodology for the visualization of mathematics. Let's visualize. Now, would it be worth it to you if your children at six and seven understood the concepts of algebra and calculus? If they understood how to multiply? What price would you put on that? Do you understand that we're the only manipulative company out there that uses these same blocks to teach the concepts of calculus, to teach the concepts of algebra, third power algebra, fourth power algebra. There is no other company out there. We're going to build a rectangle in algebra. I'm going to build it out of an x squared, 3x, and 2. I have a rectangle here, x squared, 3x, and 2. And further, I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to tell you that one side is x plus 2. Can we make a rectangle out of this? Now, this is a polynomial. What does poly mean? Nomial. Numbers. I'm going to build a rectangle. And can you see that now I have a rectangle? And for little children, this is just like a puzzle. Nothing hard about it, nothing scary. The whole thing is x squared, 3x, and 2. And this side is x plus 2. Do you see that there's x plus 2? What's that side? x plus 1. Did you see it? Could any little child see that? We couldn't call that 2, could we? Because it's x plus 2. We wouldn't call that 2x plus 2 because just like with the 18, we didn't count the inside. We just counted the edges, just the outside. Can you see that if one side is x plus 2 and the whole thing is x squared 3x and 2, the other side has to be x plus 1? Could any small child see that? Now, what's the highest number we counted to here? 3. He never got off his hand again. Can any small child see that? Do they have to be in 7th or 8th grade before they get introduced to these concepts? Now, once again, all we did tonight was count. We studied a little mathematics. We formed rectangles to facilitate that counting. We never counted past nine, and we never even touched on the subjects of zero or one. 
Now, once you have this knowledge, this information, we encourage you to share it. The fondest memories that children will have will be those quality times that they spend with their parents learning mathematics together can be one of those quality times I went from flunking hating math in junior high to um, A pluses and acing algebra in high school because of Mortensen math 